Hello everybody, welcome to Susan's Craft Cabin. I'm Susan Moore and today I'd like to show you how to make a Victorian style lampshade in leopard print fabric. So if you're ready to make one of these lampshades, gather your things together and we'll get started. Today we're going to make a large lampshade for a standard lampshade and the first thing I'm going to do is to bind the bottom and the top of the frame using cotton tape, pulling it taut all the time. I bound the lampshade frame around the top and the bottom and I cut out my template to make a pattern. My other videos show you how to do this and I have cut out my eight pieces of fabric for the eight panels using my pattern. I've also done the same with my lining fabric. So I have eight panels all stitched together on the sewing machine. You can use an overlocker as long as the tight, the stitch is tight enough because you are going to be stretching this and if the stitch isn't tight enough, it will come away. So I'm going to trim the edges of the lining and then I'm going to sew all these outer pieces together. This is a leopard skin lampshade. It's a commission for a lovely lady who loves leopard shade lampshades and I've made her quite a few. So I'm going to trim as close to the edge of the sewing line as I dare. You don't want to get too close or the fabric could pull away when you stretch it. Again, I'll just put that to one side for the moment. And I'll continue to do that all the way around. I've got my bound frame, I've got my lining fabric pieces, I've got my outer fabric pieces all sewn together. And what we're going to do first is to attach the outer fabric to the frame. So we're going to turn it right sides around and pull it over the frame. And we're going to pin at all the major points all the way around the bottom first. So I'll start with this piece. It doesn't matter which way you start, but make sure that you have your seam lines on your struts. And I'll just pop a pin in the top as well. And then I'll go to the other side, the opposite side, and I'll do the same here. Pull my fabric down. And pin. And I'll put one in the top again on the other side. So that's what we're going to do. Four sides. We're working in quarters to start with. your fabric as you go along. I'll continue pinning around the bottom of this frame. Just keep pulling it taut and pinning it. On all the 
major points. I've done the bottom and now I'm going to pull the top. You can see that the fabric fits the frame beautifully and now we're going to continue to pin around the bottom and the top and after we've done that we're going to sew the fabric to the main frame using strong thread and a sturdy needle. So I'm pulling the fabric taut. You don't need to pin all the way around every single bit if your fabric is easy to pull and stay in place. A running stitch all the way around. But you may find it helpful to pin every part before you start to sew. It's up to you. So we're going to stitch all the way around the top. And all the way around the bottom. But we start at the top and then we can pull the bottom into place later, pulling taut all the time. I've finished sewing around the bottom and around the top and if I give it a quick tap it gives us a lovely drum-like sound and if you get that sound you know that your lampshade fabric is taut enough. So the next thing to do is to trim all of this excess fabric away from around both the top and the bottom. As I said before, as close to the stitching as you can get without cutting into the stitch line. This is the traditional way of making a lampshade in the UK. So we've done bottom and now we need to do top. Probably need a small pair of scissors to do this because the top of this Victorian frame quite intricate. You take the bulk off first, then you can trim closer later. So if you have a look inside this frame now, you'll see that I have managed to match all the seam lines with all the struts. And that's what you're looking for. You want to make sure that all your seam lines are against each wire strut inside and it's a lovely shape. The next thing we're going to do is to put our lining into the lampshade. So we'll turn the lampshade upside down and wrong sides together, so that's the wrong side and this is the wrong side, so we want the stitch lines, the raw edges, to be inside between, sandwiched between, so that we don't see them when we, the shade is completed. And again, we're going to start by stitching, by pinning a couple of opposite points, turning over about half an inch to an inch at the bottom. This is just roughly to get you started. Again, four points, pinning, just pin loosely to start with. So I've done the first four points and now I'm going to continue with the other points. 
seam line to seam line. Just turn it over a little bit. It takes quite a lot of practice and I've been making these for many, many years now, too many years to remember. So I've done that and now we're going to push this through to the top. And where there's a strut, you're going to trim, cut a small notch against the strut to pull your fabric through like that. So you've got your seam line there, your seam line there, the strut in the middle, your wire strut, and if you have, you just pull that up like that. And we'll pin that in place. And I'm going to do that all the way around the top. So there's a pin there, and there. Again, I'm going to the point top. This is called balloon lining. By giving a little clip vertically up from the strut allows the lining fabric to be pulled in nice and straight and taut. Don't cut too much. Little is better than too much. So the last strut here Having done that, I'm now going to start by stitching all the way around the top. So we'll start, it doesn't really matter where you start. Now we're going to stitch this and attach it to the frame. I stitched the lining in at the top, just roughly, and now we're going to stitch the lining in at the bottom. And this is more complicated because of the shape of this lampshade. As we go around pinning, we need to really pull the fabric really tightly and taut, which is why you start at the top first. And we're going to go all the way around pulling over each point again and pinning where we had originally done so. It takes a bit of time to do this and you have to be quite strong, especially with these larger lampshades. And once I've done that, I need to choose anywhere to start. I'll just start here. You're going to pull, starting in the centre of each panel, pull it up and pin it. And then work from side to side. Pull it up and pin it. And 
and you're going to work your way around doing just that starting in the center pulling up you may well have to adjust as you go around So you can see you're beginning to get a nice taut finish inside, so pull it up. So what you do is you pull it up from the centre and pull it over the fray. Pin in the centre there like that and then pin at either side. So pull it up over the top pin in the middle pin on either side continuing all the way around until you get that tautness having done that I've stitched all the way around the bottom there and I'm going to trim off all this excess fabric. Don't be tempted to cut this fabric before you sew. Just wait, because if you cut it before you sew, it might tear as you stretch. So try not to be too impatient. Wait until you've stitched all the way around and then sew it. You may get some little puckers inside. That's totally normal. And the beauty of a handmade lampshade. You know, you couldn't make these lampshades on a machine. They all have to be made by hand and they do take a very long time to make if you make them this way. But if you do stitch your lampshades like this instead of using glue, your lampshade will last for many, many years and be a really precious piece of art really so there we go lined balloon lined and we're now ready to just trim off all the excess at the top and then I'll show you how to finish off and decorate so the next thing to do is to cover up where the struts come up to the top and you've cut that little slit before in the lining. We're going to take some white tape or whatever tape you like, you can use ribbon if you want. And we're going to take it underneath like that, pull it up and turn it over. And then we're going to stitch that bit. quite hard to get through all the layers but you just need to tuck it in just to keep it in place so I've done that and we'll just trim it off once again be careful not to not to cut into the stitching line so that's how we've done that we've tidied it up and sewn it on just to cover that bit that we cut before if you remember when we were pulling up the lining i'm going to do that and all the other on the other three struts so now on the final straight we have to just trim the lampshade as i say everything in my lampshades everything is sewn apart from the trims I used to sew everything, including the trims before the days of glue guns and strong glue, but nowadays you don't need to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is to trim the raw edges and I'm simply going to use this lovely maroon braid to finish them off with covering up the stitches all the way around. The, 
beauty of using <coughs> the glue is also that it it actually reinforces the stitching and makes everything much stronger. So that's done now and I'm now going to put some gold braid around the top edge just to cover and also to reinforce the stitches. Using a little table lamp, put it on and put your shade on there and then you'll be able to see whether or not where you need to actually place your braid. Like so. And then we're simply going to Put the braid, attach the braid onto every seam line. Finally, I'm going to attach a double layer of black fringe all the way around the bottom. So I'm going to do that one layer and then another layer to give it thickness and then I've got some beautiful beading which I'm going to attach over the top. So I'll do that now. Thank you for watching everybody. The lampshade is now complete. I hope that the instructions I've given you have been clear enough. If not, please message me and I promise I'll get back to you. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And also, if you're happy with what I've done, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.